and that challenge walks through it just basically means it it is to make sure that you understand the the tasks that are requested the challenge the business objectives uh, in the challenge clearly because if if not the whole week will be you know much harder so make sure that you understand on this hour that you understand actually the what is the challenge is asking that it's very clear super clear to you what are the the even if you don't know of course how to do them but at least what is requested what is asked is clear okay normally what i would do is that because we will share the challenge slightly earlier then i will not just go only talk but at first i will ask you to because i assumed you have read already the challenge document in your own way i want you to explain it to to everyone because we want to hear a different point of opinion of understandings so the same the same challenge document some people may understand it in this context some other people may understand in that context so just to make sure that there's a diverse opinion and all of them are most most way of understanding is correct so it's you know my way is just one and but as long as we agree on the task and what needs to be done then the rest is you know just like every project manager does their work differently but ultimately the work will be you know the, the target will be the same right you know uh, the achievement will be the same but understanding and implementations at least the way that we approach might be different and we recognize that and we actually acknowledge that so for today given that we just shared so you may not have time to read the challenge document so i'm just gonna continue directly to it okay um but you can ask um question uh, at any time just given that i will not have i will not be able to see when your hands are raised uh, emilian or anything academy team when your hands are raised please just call them so that uh, i will know okay and i think what you will get the link uh, that everyone will receive is leads to this google drive folder i imagine and uh, if not i think that's maybe can you confirm makeda if you are there if this is what people will see makeda yeah yeah okay. yes okay great okay so that means when you are here so these materials that you see here i hope you see my screen uh, they are all about the, um, the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, but, but yeah. that's not the document that they're going to see. It's the one in the technical content. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this one. And the others will be shared accordingly because then you must have access to the others because they are linked um, from week one documents. We have linked them. So in principle, maybe that either just give them permission to these ones uh, or they will not have access. So make sure that is the case oh, yes. yeah okay so but in any way all of this folder in any way you will you will see this so these are for you and it's all about whatever you need this is going to be the documents that um, you will be able to consult right if you need if something is not clear about on time submission you will be you should be able to see to get documents there and this will be updated every time based on questions based on if something is not clear we update this document this is a living document so that is the case. And then the code of conduct, definitely you should read it because like anything else, this is important. Uh, this is our rule. And, you know, because we are a lot of people, uh, we have to make sure that the code of conduct is understood by everyone. Uh, is there, I think I see, I hear, Gitera, uh, Uh, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay. I received uh, that email uh, with the technical contents attachment, but it has an empty folder. Like it has nothing at all. Can, can you reload? Maybe just if you okay. reload. Okay. I will try. Okay. Um, and also, you. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, so if people are not speaking, just may, make sure that it's muted so that I don't flip because I, if I hear some 
something that I, I might assume that you are asking. So if you are uh, want to ask question, please raise your hand so that uh, the team will, of course, we, I really encourage uh, like you ask questions. So it's not discouragement on that, but all the time, make sure that at least if you are not speaking, uh, your mic should be silent or your mic should be off. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think that will be fixed, but this is this is gonna be like, um, I could make sure the link contains what is intended to be shared. Um, but if not, it's maybe it's just the internet sometimes just to reload it and it should be possible. But in any way, what you are gonna be, if you see this, the technical document, that's mostly the case, so that's fine, the rest will be shared. So the rest I'm just showing, you know, what, what actually are and you know even if you just see only now the technical document the, the folders or the files inside that's sufficient okay so for all practical things in the challenge walkthrough we are going to be focusing on technical content but this ones I'm just explaining what they are when you see and on the onboarding please check so that you get all the links that are necessary on the code of conduct you will you will get all the you know what is um tolerable and what is not tolerable and then also on the end time submission is all about submission okay and then after that all of the carry contents will go on the carry content and the technical content contains all the relevant technical elements so this the basic handling introduction to uh, result based management that will be given later in that you know, as a tutorial and many of the tutorial components will be also in the technical content so you will you will find them maybe organized by dates, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, or also sometimes just on on the just on the main folder, right, on the technical content folder. But the key document that you should be the challenge, what we call the challenge document, that contains every necessary information about the technical challenge, is inside this Google Doc, right? So you should open it, and um, and that is what you will get. So. So this one, if you want, of course, to download it, you can download it from file, you know, and of course, download it as PDF so that you can keep it. But given that this document will be, uh, you know, this document will be updated every time. So make sure that you consult once in a while, because depending on questions, we will edit this uh, Google Doc. And the challenge title, it is data-driven decision-making for solar farm site selection. and that's just because normally these are the titles we also care because it should reflect what you do in your portfolio you know um, along your project experiences this will come and this week a lot more of you will do some data will give you data will, you will analyze them but also you report and you basically uh, you're reporting and writing it's to help decision making and the content or the the field that you are um, working on solar farm site selection okay. this is just a table of content but the most important part again here just in the introduction normally this will not be there but just this time because everyone is starting and if you look at this document you should at least know what it is so this introduction tells you what is throughout the week like i mean just this week okay and the project starts from here on this project scenario and this is key so whatever you do make sure you understand you relate everything you do to the project scenario that means the project scenario is the business objective so everything else below this is about either the describing the data or what you're going to learn doing it or the you know the guideline just like any you know any of your uh, superior would tell you what to do how to do it it might it is that element but the business objective is what is actually why you start the work you know why why you do invest time is to address the project scenario or sometimes we call it the business objective you know so basically just to make sure that is so this is the business objective so this is the key and the heart of everything that means everything else is to address this component now what is the challenge this week it, there is a company called moonlight energy solutions and you know and this moonlights uh lights uh energy solutions of course uses uh result-based management principles 
So this is basically what it means. If you know already, if you especially have been working on uh, not-for-profit or government organizations, you will know what this means. This is most fundings these days are coming, especially for big fundings like outside uh, government fundings are coming using result-based management. What entirely it means is that you are getting the fund based on a result. You don't get uh, that. But in that whole formalism of um, this is called result-based management. So if you are planning to work on any organizational, bigger organizational ones, it is important that you know this one. And hopefully most of you already at least have heard it before. If not, don't worry. There is from introduction, um, we will follow along the lines in many, many, and in, in all of, more or less in many of the uh, the challenges, not only this week. And a lot of this result-based management supports the MND, which is basically monitoring and evaluation. Because as a project manager, you not only have the task to, to ensure that you have a strategy, but also that your strategy, how you are going to be monitoring and evaluation that strategy to its implementation, right? So that, that is part. So the focus here is therefore aimed at optimizing. Um, um, there are questions, so let, maybe just let me attend to those questions and then I will come up, Chantal, and Ababa or Abab. So. Um, mine is just an observation. The page yeah. you're reading from is not what we are seeing. Okay, what are you seeing? So you're still on the technical content folder. Oh, oh yeah. okay, yes, thank you. Because I think I shared only one folder. Thanks a lot. Okay, now you probably see the challenge document, right? Yes. Thanks, Chantal, for that. Uh, Abebe? Oh, okay. Uh, my, my question is different from this day. I'm sorry. To ask yep, so, go on. Okay. Yeah. What is the difference like, between the intensive clinics uh, and academic training and this one? Uh, so the intensive training, there are requirements, the prerequisites that are, it's a lot more code-based. So that means it's entirely, so there are two main differences. One and is the prerequisite, the pre Hello? Hello, was there? Okay, so the intensive training is basically, it is about, um, a prerequisite is very different. It is maximizing on different area, not on project management, data for project management or AI, generative AI for project management, but it is focused on other uh, fields like machine learning, engineering, data engineering, and generative AI as a developer. While this UTJ is much more focused for anyone from any background, who is interested in data analysis, because these days data-driven decision-making is not only for people who are data engineers, but for everyone. So this one focuses on that. So, and then also the time requirement for intensive training is 60 hours a week. So that means you cannot have work when you, when you because this, that one is a lot more um, different, right? So that's basically full-time training, and this one is 20 hours, so we make sure that you can complete many of these tasks in 20 hours a week. Because we assume most people in this program will be working adjacently. I hope that is clear, Abebe. Yeah. Okay. What about the program, on the program process? Like, uh, like, so we, don't, we don't require, you can do, if you are interested, you can do pro like coding here, but a lot more of it doesn't require it's a no code solution most of it so of course anyone who is already knows how to code and code many of the things are the same you can code them or you can use a no code solution but we focus on a no code solution here a lot more okay great i think that's clear so um but the structure of the projects are the same you know, whether it is any program we give, as we said, it's the same uh, training model. So that means there is always a business objective. There's always tasks. 
and they, you know earlier I showed the, the diagram the triangle these are what we follow you know whether it is about research or anything we will follow that same strategy so the parallelism is there like um, so okay so the moonlight energy solutions uh, aims to develop a strategic approach to significantly enhance its operational efficiency and sustainability through targeted solar investments so this is the business objective i mean that the basically the objectives or the description what moonlight energies and you are a project uh, program coordinator at this company and your task is of course now that the engineering team has been collecting on three um, countries in africa uh, basically for about a year or two years actually they have been collecting the different uh, using iot instruments they have been collecting different data and that data is all about the solar radiation um, it was they were aggregating they were collecting the data every minute and also the solar you know the kind of the wind speed the humidity temperature many things um, that will help of course you know whether a solar farm in that site is you know will be useful or not because you know you you have to know what these are if, if the wind is so strong you know that the amount of for example how you you need to install this the the structure that hosts you know that holds the um, the solar panels are going to be very different and and many things so they needed they needed to know um so they needed to know exactly you know to give you enough data to help you make a strategy or make a kind of comparative analysis so you are a product uh, program coordinator you have of course some people further you you can ask for them to analyze uh, you know the, their data so you may have a data science team but for now you are the very first point to to prepare a, a strategy document so basically as a program coordinator your task is to perform quick analysis of an environmental measurement provided by the engineering team and then translate your observation as a strategy document okay so you are that so this is this must be clear and you must know what it means okay so your analysis should focus on identifying key trends and learn valuable insights that will support your data driven case in particular your analysis and recommendation must present a strategy focusing on identifying high potential regions for solar installation that align with a company's longer term goals so i am reading them because it must be clear everything is written here as we want it okay and it is about you are going to be doing data analysis you're going to be thinking not only just data analysis but you're doing data analysis to to ensure like for example your goal to be sustainable and the costs that would probably will be necessary to support this thing you know once you have a, the, the the solar farm uh, which ones so like you can assume for now before that there were another selection out of many con uh, countries that these three places were identified and sites were identified and this is just you know the next iteration in that in that program and you are then asked of course the data is coming so you should be doing quick analysis if you are if you know how to code you can code but you don't have to because you can make that the data we aggregated is such that you can actually analyze them using google sheets if you want or if you have access to gpt4 open code interpreter or another one open code interpreter you can also use the, those because these are like automatic data analysis they offer for example chat gpt in gpt4 they offer code interpreter that basically if you give it data it will be able to analyze for you and you have to write of course the the prompt you know you have to lead it what you want from the data but if you don't have that access for now you can use also just google sheet and we will give tutorials in both so the google sheets allow you again to do lots of things google sheet mean also if you have excel um, or other analytics tool and you know tableau or any uh, power bi all of this can support uh, whatever is asked here because it's a quick analysis not a deep analysis you need to do just learning trends okay so the plan will will involve of course you are bridging because the company believes on result-based management uh, principles so you of course the plan will involve setting specific measurable goals for your analysis 
implementing actions, basically, and regularly assessing progress through a structured RBM framework. So your whole strategy, based on the data, how you write it is will follow this. So this is basically, if you understand this paragraph, then you this is it. Throughout your work, you must ensure to address this part. Okay, Everything else is to support this business objective because as I said, value, you are providing value and value to the company means your strategy document that is data driven, okay? And has enough meat, that means enough uh, content as a strategy document, okay? Then we are clear and through, you know, in doing that, so these expected outcomes actually tell you what needs, what are things that you would do because, and when you do them, what are things you will learn? right as well as what are the outcomes and definitely you will probably for a writing your strategy document we highly encourage that you use any available generative ai tools that you have including chat gpt including the edge browser you know so if i am like just in the edge browser you can just and do some chats and um and all so we encourage because this time it is all about how to efficiently use and synthesize of course you can just Generative AI can generate for you anything, but how do you select? How do you prompt is the question. So there's going to be a lot of components of applying generative AI in preparing your, your strategy document and understanding key principles of result-based management, as well as learn how to implement data visualizations using, using Google Sheets and dive deeper into data analysis using advanced features of Google Sheets, like formulas, you know, pivot tables, and many things in Google Sheets. And then synthesize learning and present project outcomes because that's the key. You are a project coordinator. Ultimately, you are going to be presenting and you will be presenting on Monday. Those people who are willing to present will present on Monday their finding. And of course, basically, you will, you know, how to present, how to, as a project coordinator, you know, as people, you might be presenting for funders, you might be presenting for the executive team and all that. So your presentation should should have also, you know, should be professional. So you will also basically improve your, your skill on creating impactful and engaging, pre, engaging presentations. So the data is in the folder. Uh, it is in this data folder. So you will have three CSV data. And the structure of the content is this one. And because we also got that data from the world, like, you know, the, uh, this data sets, this place. So you will be able to, even if something is not clear, you can go to that that you know this site to learn more about the data and how it's collected and everything and the data there is in one minute and we aggregated it into in 10 minutes window using media and averaging okay so so this is just gives you what what is required right so you should also learn a little bit about you know which parameter which features am i going to be using you know you know what does that mean this each each of them you have to explore what the data is and how useful it's going to be and if you are trying to maximize where to put a solar i think that you know the what you are maximizing is written here uh, you know significant enhance its operational efficiency and sustainability through targeted solar investment so because of that you are going to invest so you know you should think about profits you should think about expenses and which parameters will model for you this these elements you know what does that mean wind measurement what does it mean rain what does it mean cloud you know if there is probably um, a lot more rain then there's a lot more um, um, a lot more of course cloud and when there is a lot of cloud so the the efficiency of the solar panels will of course decrease so things like that you should take into consideration but have a very quick model for for your strategy you know and then select and support your selection and also you support like using our uh, you know uh, the result based uh, management principles support how would you monitor and what would be the measurements required and how do you know that it, you know your proposal will work you know how do you monitor it so it's basically just that's what you're preparing but first you you have the data to analyze and the team is me and Nathaniel as a lead uh, instructors and uh, there are going to be other people who are providing giving you also tutorials as well as also the non-technical the career part as well there's going to be more and these are the key dates all the uh, you know on 
basically Wednesday and Saturday end of day are the entry submissions, what you should care that you have to submit the interim submission on Wednesday and the final submission on Saturday, end of day. So the deliverables are task one is, uh, you know, again, this is much more to help you structure, but if you want to do parallelly, that's fine. Whatever you do, you submit on Wednesday, the summary of it, and then Saturday, the final, everything that you have. So in a way, it's much more to structure this task one, task two, you can, you know, it's a log chronological order in a way. If you do task one, you task two is easier. But if you want to do in parallel, you can. So don't don't worry on that. So first is get get actually a good understanding of result based management, basic data handling, learn and get familiar with uh, Excel or um, uh, Google Sheet, and also using generative AI tools like ChatGPT or any other that you can get. Um, and then as well as also just learn a little bit of tricks and and techniques on using Google Sheets for basic charting and creating pivot tables and, and more. And you will be surprised. It, however, is a like one person, a data engineer would use probably still 50% or more uh, Google Sheets or, or similar tools, Airtable, because ultimately they are just another databases, right? So in a way it is powerful, Don't, you know, for those people especially, code environment knowing how to do how to use google Sheet is really gonna change a lot of your your employability because you can do so many things in google sheets and google or you know microsoft or google tools and you can do almost everything through them and if you know how to code we are very encouraging if you also apply coding for your analysis and everything task two is data analysis techniques advanced filtering and query functions using Google Sheets and statistical analysis and developing interactive charts as well as integrating Google Sheets with Google Data Studio for enhanced reporting, which means dashboard. And task three is on, you know, applying RBM strategy um, or RBM methodology for your writing, strategy document writing, because your ultimate product is you analyze, but that is to support your case, but your case is a strategy document that says, we should invest there, we should be doing that, because if we do that, the cost of that is this much, the cost of maintenance is this one, and, and of course, we also, we expect our you know yearly revenue will be, or our yearly uh, solar energy production will be this much. All of that comes from an analysis, but that analysis supports your strategy and your recommendation. So that is why then to support your case, use basically what is the outcome expected, the impact expected, you know, like all of that, that impacts the company, uh, you use the RBM strategy. So basically you, you then set a specific measurable, achievable, relevant and time, time bound or smart objectives and develop monitoring and evaluation plan using Google Sheets. And basically designing effective dashboard and sharing a dashboard with stakeholders that is uh, part in task two, in task uh, three, sorry. And in task four is basically finalizing and writing it. And when you write, we, we encourage so that you can re really write fast. You know, normally these things might take longer, but using generative AI, you should really have a very well-structured document, appealing document without any grammar mistake and without any spelling mistake. It should be perfect because these days you can do that for very efficiently. You don't need any writer for that. You can even whatever you write, you give it to generate, you know, and, and to rephrase generative AI to rephrase for you, then it will rephrase by fixing all those elements. So make sure that you really generate something amazing um, using tools. Of course, the idea, the seed idea, and what needs to be written should come from you because I mean, otherwise it will be put, you know, so it should be just garbage in, garbage out. Okay, so that's it. And I think what needs to be in the interim report as well as on the final report is here so this should be easy the late policy if you read to read more here is a reference and this is also described and there's going to be tutorials a number of tutorials starting from this afternoon uh, introduction to the challenge which we i just did now and then introduction to result based management and basic data handling will be tomorrow and then uh, sorry today this afternoon and then the others will be tomorrow data visualization is in google sheets as well as data analysis techniques um, and then on Wednesday, applying RBM strategies and Thursday dashboard and effective presentation. 
as well as on Friday, project presentation and RBM reporting uh, will be done. And these are some references. We might we will add references, and you know you should share references in Slack channel as well. Okay, so from my side, that is the case. Are there any questions? Etan? Oh, yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, so my question is basically with the due dates in mind, because I'm seeing the lessons go from Monday to Thursday, Monday to Friday. Yeah. So will we be able to, I mean, complete the tasks if we haven't yet attended? I mean, if we haven't yet learned these tutorials, like for example, let's say there's some Friday in order to complete the task, but I have to wait until Friday in order to be able to add that to yeah. the, yeah. I don't know if I'm making sense, but yeah. Yeah, you do, you do, Ethan, and I know exactly what you're asking, and you have to know we are a self-learning. So that means tutorials are just to guide, but right. a lot right. more of it is just social learning and self-learning. So we assume you learn about many of these things, not from the tutorials. You will be okay. searching, and then the people will be searching, and they will share contents, and you discuss about them, and that's how it is. And our tutorials are a marking, let, let's say, it marks the date, and if somehow you didn't do it, it will give you that opportunity, but not the main thing. It's, you know, it's not a class-based, it's a very, you know, like, like work, you know? All right. They give sense. you some task, you might, they, they might explain to you some other day, but you don't wait until they explain to you. So it's very similar, so in that sense, you don't have to wait to write, you know, uh, on to Friday to learn about that skill. You will be able to read and learn about that. But on Friday, maybe you will get a, a different insight, maybe. So it's a self and social learning. So I hope that addresses. Anyone else? Any other question? Anything that's not clear? Oh. Yeah, it's again. Go. Um, so what exactly are we submitting by Wednesday? Documents, right? So right. your analysis documents, it's written clearly here. Just let me scroll to it. So, you know, the on Wednesday interim submission, uh, some some of your work in progress, and it should be the, the interim submission aims to evaluate the trace understanding and basic principles of that. So whatever it is. But it's it's through the report. You are preparing the report along the way, right? So it is basically whatever you manage to do along that report. So the document format, the submission guideline tells you what what document it is. You should be submitting a PDF document. Um, you know, you're basically that is a work in progress. So the final strategy document. Okay, Samuel. Okay, uh, thank you, and it is, it is well presented. Uh, I just want to ask is uh, using the visualization, uh, can we use the Power BI uh, instead yes. of the Google Sheet? Yes, instead of Google Sheet or Google Data Studio, if you have access to Power BI or um, Looker or any, you know, Google Data Studio is Looker, but if you use Tableau or any other, it's fine. The most important part is to do a good visualization. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Any question? Okay, I assume then it is very clear. And if not, absolutely ask on Slack and make sure, you know, it, this is very interactive in your own time, in your own pace. Make sure to spend at least 20 hours um, a week because we assume that one for the challenge content, if you spend less, you probably won't be able to finish. So make sure that, you know, um, and if you have comments, if something is not to your whatever, just make sure you, you ask and we discuss. It is all about everyone, you know, understanding clearly and, and everyone getting value out of it. I think that's our principle. So it's not mostly for certificate, it is really to, to get the best out of it, it is, as I said, it's much more of internship more than learning. And so deliver value. So that means if you can deliver constantly value every week, 
then that means wherever you go, you will deliver value and everybody would want, I mean, if you are already in the job, you can demonstrate delivering value and, you know, our goal is that you increase your salary uh, with or you get promotion, right? And if you want to change jobs, that you have enough portfolio projects that are very clear to everyone and it's the desire of every company now, if we want to hire you, we want to exactly look at what you have done, your your reports that you have written and all that. So an accelerated and empowered and value driven person, everybody wants to hire and everybody wants to promote, right? So um, that is the goal and make sure to deliver value on this project and consider yourself as a coordinator for that program and you know everything depends on you. So have that mindset and work through that. Okay, and we will be all you know um, online. Therefore, you can ask uh, any questions you have. But and for now, we can stop here, and just we will then um, connect via Slack from here on uh, until the next tutorial, as well as until the next uh, social event. Okay, so then thank you everyone then academy team we can stop recording perfect thank you